you're gross. Welcome back to another edition of it's like pulling teeth. Just say it. No. Trying something new. <laughs> we are going to finish up France today with um chocolate. <laughs> chocolate and chocolate. Dark chocolate with sea salt and almond flavored truffles. Almond flavored French dusted truffles. Wow, mm. it makes it so much better because it's French. French dusted. It's like, oh, it's French, so it's better. Which would you like to try first? I'm not going to finish these tonight. Sure. I don't care. There's too much. I don't care. I think we should do the dark chocolate first because mm. I'm not a huge fan of dark chocolate. I don't think, do think really anyone is. Would you like to read us our last trivia question? Didn't we already do the last one? Nope. We did not. This big chocolate bar. Okay. The French phrase a la mode. A la mode. Means served with oysters from the heavens, served served. With ice cream or in style? You, without looking, you know the answer to this one. No, I don't. What? How would Think about it. How would I know? Apple pie a la mode? You've heard that before, right? No? Alright, so the answer is served with ice cream and in style. A la and? Allah is in style. Yep, it's C and T. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, I don't see the sea salt that they're talking about. It's definitely not like it's pictured. See all that salt? Oh, you can taste it. I don't see or taste any salt. And first we just taste dark chocolate and the salt kicks in. All I taste is dark chocolate. That's nasty. Not as bad as those sour candies though. <laughs> you have to watch the last episode if you miss the sour candies. How do you not taste the salt? Dude. I want one more. That's gross. Well, we're definitely going to have different ratings on this one. Ew. I'll give this a two and a half. What? You like dark chocolate. No, I don't. But I don't... I don't like dark chocolate, but I don't dislike it. It's like in the middle. Like, it's okay. Really? Because I seem to recall you being all over dark chocolate. Nope. Maybe when I was five. Well, I gave the sour candies a half of one. So did I. And the sour cola I gave a one. So this I'll give a one and a half. And you can give your two or two and a half or whatever else. Two and a half, huh? All right, moving on to Le French Dos de Chauffeurs. Can you, can you try it? French accent? No. So, when we first opened this box, I believe I said that I've been to France for three or four times, four or five times. And I have to say that I was not impressed with Paris. Why? It was too... 
it was too metropolitan for me. When I think of Europe, I think of Toulouse, France, which is... What do you mean, met metro? Metropolitan no. is, it's like a busy city, lots of people. I didn't, I didn't care for it. Like New York City? Yeah, but it's, they don't build up, they build out, so it's very, it's very wide, broad city. You know that New York City is just on an island of Manhattan, right? And they, so they build up. Um, what was I saying? Toulouse, however, is very European, it's quintessential Europe. Why don't you like Paris? Just because... Paris was okay. I, I prefer Toulouse. Uh, I forgot to read about the dark chocolate that we didn't care for. Who cares? Who cares? We don't need to read about it. Well, we have to read about these. No, we don't. Yeah, almond flavored truffles. In France, there's no such thing as too many almonds. Go get the scissors if you need them. One peek inside Parisian sweet shops is all the proof you need. In the pastry section, you'll find croissants coated in sugary sliced almonds and doughy, doughy puffs filled with luscious almond cream. In the candy aisle, you'll find Draghi's candy coated almonds and Calisson candied fruit and almond jellies. And in the cake display, you'll f you'll see almond masterpieces like financiers, mad madeleines, and crispy galets de roi. Ro Roy. I don't know. But if there was one sweet to convince you that French's almond obsession is totally warranted, it's these decadent dark chocolate truffles. Dark chocolate. One taste, and you'll be just as nuts for almond sweets as the French are. This smells weird. Uh oh. And it smells like really strong almond. It smells like fancy chocolate. Should I eat it with my pinky stuck up? No? Not good? Ew. Very strong almond. Ew, don't. <laughs> you showed everybody your chocolate tongue. I didn't know there was still chocolate. That wasn't very good either. <laughs> That's not a good way to finish our box. We we're doing so strong with the fours and three and a halves. <laughs> Ugh. Should we have one more just to make sure we, that we don't like it? <laughs> You're done? <laughs> really? Alright. How would you like to rate these? <laughs> that big old bag and we only eat one each. That's one and a half. <sighs> don't have to yell at me. Um... What else did I give a one and a half? Um, the dark chocolate. The salt one that we missed. They were better than that for me. I'll give it a two. Fine, I'll give it a two. Alright. So that does it for Paris. I mean, that does it for Fine. France. Did I read about the Eiffel Tower? <laughs> yes, I did. Yeah. Did I read about heart symbols? No, but you don't need to. <laughs> what? You don't need to. Everyone knows that hearts symbolize love. But did you know that it was France that made it so? The heart was first used as a symbol of love in the medieval French romance story, Roman de la Pure, which dates to the 1250s. 
In the miniature illustration, a lover kneels and offers his heart to a damsel. But it's not the iconic heart shape we know today. It's shaped like a pine cone, which matched early anatomical descriptions. I'll show everybody the picture of the pine cone heart right there. You're not even looking. Look. Oh, you're done now? Pine cone heart. He's offering it to her. Okay. You don't care. What else do we have in here that we can share as our last nothing. bit of French yums? Literally nothing. Big wigs came from France. Denim. Your denim jeans came from France. The little black dress came from France. Polo shirts. Look, polo shirts came from France. The bikini came from France. Ooh la la. Thank you very much to the French. Many French designers were forced to close shop during the German occupation of France in World War II. But when the war ended, shops reopened and spirits soared, inspiring a mechanical engineer named Louis Riard to design a brand new garment reflective of the liberated national mood. Enter the bikini just in time for the summer of 1946. The new fashion was met with controversy, which Riard reveled in. He hired a skywriter to fly over the French Riviera promoting the bikini and told the public that a two-piece swimsuit was not a bikini unless it could be pulled through a wedding ring. Scandalous indeed. That's exciting. No, so now you know. It's really not. <laughs> it is exciting. I don't even wear bikinis. You may someday. All right, so that'll do it. I don't have our new box yet, so we don't even have a clue as to where it's coming from. I do. There's a clue. Because there's a secret puzzle on here, and it says, move over potato chips next month to crunch into a blah, 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 blah. Addictive oniony blank chips. And then the answer is cassava. Cassava chips? On oniony cassava chips. Where does it say that? Cassava. C A S S A B A. So, anybody out there want to look that up for us? Until next time, give a like, give a thumbs up, leave us a comment, subscribe if you wish. Hit the notification button. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> and until next time, always remember to try something new. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.